Sorry I put the series on hold for a while, but I've been catching up with school stuff. Also, it's no secret that I've been a little intimidated by how much the Bad Balance series has blown up, so I really want to make sure each episode is good. Today, I wanted to look at 12. 12 debuted in Third Strike, so he wasn't in Second Impact. If you ask almost anyone familiar with 3S, they'll tell you that Sean and 12 approximately share the bottom tier spot. But while Sean is a Shoto with bad versions of a familiar kit, 12 is a completely original character with a completely unique kit. I'm going to explain a little bit about how 12's game plan works, then I'll explain why he's dysfunctional in the engine. If you want to skip straight to what's bad, I'll have a timestamp in the description, but you'll be skipping some info about the more awkward parts of his design. 12's light normals are actually alarmingly good. His stand jab has ridiculous range and pretty good speed. It's actually a great interrupt, or poke in neutral. It does cancel, but at most ranges it can't combo to anything, not even SA1. This is actually going to be a huge theme for 12. Annoyingly, stand jab whiffs on many crouching characters. Though thankfully the commitment is pretty low, so it's hard to whiff punish. Low jab and stand short don't go as far, but they won't whiff on crouch. Low short is also quite good. It goes much farther than most low shorts, and also does higher damage. It also combos to itself, you can do up to 3 on some characters. It also cancels, and unlike 12's other 3 light normals, it can't be parried high, which makes it essential to his anti-parry mix-up. Unfortunately, while cancels work, the only specials fast enough to combo are Light Axe or SA1, and both cancels only work at close range. This means after two low shorts, your max damage ender is literally a third low short into nothing. A super cancel does work in the corner, and there it's good and practical in a real match setting. And it works anywhere versus some characters. It's a good confirm, when it's available. 12's medium normals aren't bad, but already we'll start to see some problems. Far Strong is an extremely good poke on paper, with decent speed and fantastic reach. However, it won't hit most crutching opponents, which makes it extremely liable to getting whiff punished. Also, the damage is alarmingly low. It does about half the damage of Ryu's Far Strong. Close Strong is good as a cancel, and unlike all of 12's other cancelable normals, it cannot be parried low. Once again, your only combo rod is SA1 or a single hit of Axe. Frustratingly, even this normal whiffs on some crouching characters. One little annoying thing about this normal is that the activation range for the close version is outside its max attacking range, so occasionally you'll get the close strong which whiffs when you want far strong. That can also happen after jump-ins when you want close strong. Low strong looks like it would be a pretty good anti-air. And for the most part, it is. It beats jump attacks pretty clean. One especially nice thing is if you do it high and the opponent air parries it, they don't necessarily get a punish. On the ground, this normal can be parried low or high and doesn't have much range, along with no combo options, so it's not really used at all outside anti-airs in my experience. Though I think whiffing it is 12's fastest way of building meter. Stand forward is probably 12's most unique normal. It has really good range, which makes it pretty consistent after his jump-ins, and it's pretty fast. It doesn't special cancel, but it does super cancel. But SA1 won't combo if you're too far out, which is irritating. Its gimmick is that you can super jump cancel it. This makes it good on hit and block for continuing 12's pressure. Also, it's his only combo route to SA2, which is air only. Low forward is a low with good range. It's a frame slower than Ryu's, and it has no combo options, but it is a functional low poke. 12 has one more medium normal, back medium kick. It does the most damage of all his cancelable normals, which makes it ideal in punish combos, I guess. It's also faster than close strong, and not tied to 12's proximity. Annoyingly, it can be parried low or high, so it's a horrible meaty. It looks like a good anti-air normal, but it really isn't. Heavy normals are where the cracks really start to show. None of 12's heavy special cancel. Stain Fierce has decent damage, but poor range and horrible startup. The range is even worse against a crouching opponent. So you really can't use this as a poke at all. And while it's a decent anti-air by the hitbox, the poor startup makes using it kind of difficult. More importantly, if it's parried, the opponent gets a jump in combo. And 12 can't mix it up with a super cancel or anything. Crouch Fierce has similarly good damage. 
and similarly poor range. On block it's minus 8, and combined with the poor pushback, lots of characters can actually punish this. My big problem with this normal is that it has no specific purpose. It can be parried high or low, and though you might catch someone by surprise who's only looking for one parry, it's not exactly rewarding if you do. And if they react and do 3, 12 eats a full punish. The poor recovery means it's kind of bad for momentum even if they can't punish it. The poor range means it doesn't work as a poke. There's no real scenario where this is ideal. It has potential as a counter poke due to its heavy normal priority and long active period, but in my experience it's just begging for a whiff punish. Stem Roundhouse is probably the first button you'll notice if you're a beginner. It reaches just over half screen and does good damage too. A lot of people probably see this normal and say, ah, so 12 is like Dalsim, even though this is his only real Dalsim normal. This normal is generally really good, but there are little things holding it back. First of all, it has reactable startup, so a good opponent can potentially just parry it. The long startup and whiff animation also make it vulnerable to jumps, or to being interrupted in general. Finally, it's minus 11 on block. The massive pushback means this isn't usually a factor, but some characters can punish it at any range. Low Roundhouse is 12's last grounded normal. It's a low and knocks down, standard for a sweep. It slides, so it has decent range. But the startup is horrible at 13 frames. This is so slow, you can't combo it after a jump normal. And it doesn't work after many different parries. On block it does 3 hits for some reason, just to make it a slightly harder parry I guess. It's minus 11 on block, and combined with 12's forward movement it's almost always unsafe. Being unsafe is pretty awful when you can't easily combo into it, and the long duration makes it risky to use as a counter poke since it can get whiff punished very easily. 12 has 6 unique air normals, which believe it or not is a lot compared to most SF3 characters. Jump Jab and Jump Short have low damage, but they have nice low angle hitboxes and tons of active frames. Jump Strong is a good air to air. And the high hitbox actually makes it hit reliably late when doing jumping combos. Same for Jump Forward I think, but you don't see that one very much. Jump Fierce has a fantastic horizontal hitbox and will connect from extremely far out. Though it struggles to work properly at close range. Jump Roundhouse has a fantastic vertical hitbox, and can hit from extremely high up. It can also cross up. And from certain jump arcs, it will either cross up or not, based on the timing of the button press. This normal is fantastic, and it's one of 12's best features. Let's talk about 12's movement briefly. 12 has a decent forward dash and back dash. His regular walk cycle is low profile. This means he can easily walk under fireballs. Which sounds kind of cool, until you remember you'd rather parry them for the meter. It takes a few frames to become low profile, so you can't parry one hit of a fireball, then go under it the way Ibuki can with her slide. If it was instant, it would be great for stuff like Denjin, but as it is, it's really not useful for almost any fireball. More practically, he can walk under jump-ins, which is novel. It's a bit worse than it looks. If you backwalk, 12's proximity guard animation means he often just blocks the jump anyway. If you walk forward and the opponent attacks late in their jump, they can still hit 12. But they do have to attack very deep, which can open them up to anti-air mix-ups. It is very good for sneaking under the opponent's close range jumps. Cross-ups usually won't hit you. 12's jump is pretty normal. His super jump is very high with poor lateral range. But that really isn't felt as a weakness at all, since I haven't brought up 12's main feature yet. He can air dash. The air dash comes out as a glide. If 12 hits a wall and you hold toward the wall, he'll automatically bounce off it and glide the other way. Once 12 is gliding, you can cancel the dash at any time by doing any air normal. I think this should go without saying, but 12's air dash gives him fantastic movement. He's very difficult to corner. But it's also fantastic for his pressure and mix-ups. Doing up forward then forward gives 12 an instant air dash that's very low to the ground. Not only does this give 12 what's effectively a slow dive kick, 
but your heavy normals here will cancel your air dash without having time to start up, so you can use them to land and throw. It's actually extremely strong, because even if the opponent knows it's coming, it's a very risky throw to tech. And that's not all. With certain air dash heights and angles, 12 can quickly and easily threaten a jump roundhouse that hits on the front or the back. Because the air dash is cancelled by the air normal, the same jump angle and dash timing can result in a cross up or not, which is insanely hard to react to. The problem with air dash is that 12 can't parry during or after it, which means anytime you do it, the opponent can just DP or something. Practically speaking, not everyone has a DP, and low air dashes are hard to react to. So air dash pressure is still good, but it does have hard counters. 12's final basic action is his taunt. When activated, he briefly turns invisible. How easily you can get it up depends on the matchup. You can usually get it after a super or a throw. It's pretty strong. This is an overhead. And this is a low. You can also throw them. Even if they're randomly hitting buttons hoping to interrupt you, you can just hit them from afar with a needle at basically zero risk. The big downside is that it doesn't last very long at all, so realistically you're probably going to hit them with one thing tops before you're back to normal. This is just a novelty, but taunting while invisible brings Swell back with a unique sound effect. I figure most people probably don't know this. 12 has three special moves. The first is NDL, done by QCF Punch. I just call it Needle. Functionally, this move is a bit like a Seismo. You've got three different ranges you can pick. The recovery is slightly longer for the higher versions. No version cancels to Super. Also, you can't combo into them from any cancel. So all it is, in effect, is a long range poke. No version goes full screen. But the EX version tracks the opponent. Also, it launches them, potentially setting you up for a juggle. The EX version also has good low profile, which makes it great as an anti-air. And potentially as an anti-fireball. It's also safe on parry. Generally, all versions of Needle are useful, just extremely combo unfriendly. The regular versions can be punished by certain supers, and they're also weak to jump, so they're not used too much. 12's next special is AXE, Quarter Circle Back Punch. Easier to call it Axe. The light version is two hits. Unfortunately, when cancelling into Light Axe, you tend to push the opponent out of the back hit. Which means, while it's normally minus 5 on block, it's actually usually worse than that. The damage is also extremely low. And it doesn't knock down. This is absolutely horrible for 12's punish game. He gets very few knockdowns in neutral. There are supers that can punish even Light Axe on block, but thankfully they're somewhat rare. But it is another thing you have to worry about in those matchups. Medium Axe does more damage but is a bit slower, so you lose the combo from low short. More importantly, you still only get one hit from mediums, but the longer duration means you're worse on block and hit. Which completely invalidates the very marginally higher damage over Light Axe. You can't combo to Heavy Axe at all. This seems like it would make it useless for combos, but actually, doing it raw does more damage than any of 12's cancels. This is especially true if you mash it. For medium, heavy, and EX Axe, you can mash punches to get more hits, which increases the damage. Unfortunately, this is useless for cancels to medium Axe, where the extra hits whiff and you're just more unsafe. But mashed heavy Axe is literally 12's max damage meterless combo, almost by a factor of 2. Unfortunately, you can't combo it even from a jump in so it doesn't help 12's jump combos at all. To use Heavy Axe at all, it's got to be your combo starter and combo ender. EX Axe is fast enough to combo into from mediums, but the damage increase is pretty negligible. However, it does do more damage than Heavy Axe if used as a raw punish. 
And it can combo from jump ins. At least situationally. All Axe Rations are decently good at doing chip damage, and while they're not that hard to parry, 12 can at least vary the number of hits, which makes them a bit tricky. Axe's 12 is only special with a super cancel, but for some godforsaken reason, you can only super cancel the first hit. Compare with Necro Electricity. Also, compare the damage. And note that Necro has combos into all versions. This is so lame for 12. Going through Axe literally adds more scaling than damage. Doing raw normal to super actually massively outdamages an Axe cancel. But normal Axe to super is still a useful sequence because it gives you a later super cancel window, so it's good for confirming. You can also do Axe Midair. Apart from chipping the opponent at endgame, and maybe some tricky cross-up stuff, this is nearly useless. It is good as an air to air, I think, but the poor startup means you can't easily do it on reaction to your opponent's jump. As an extra kick in the groin, you can't even cancel the air version to 12's air super. 12's final special move is DRA, quarter circle back midair. I don't know what this one's supposed to stand for, so I'll just call it Dive. This move is horribly unsafe on block. And also, there are no combos into it. And also, it's not even that good on hit, either in damage or frame advantage. Well, I guess the damage is pretty good by 12's metrics. Regardless, it seems to be mostly good for positioning. Doing it over someone's head can be used to escape the corner, for example. You can do it from a back jump, so it might surprise someone trying to approach. Generally, you only see the EX version, which actually is safe on block. It's often used as an air-to-air. -air. It's two parries and quite fast, and even if the opponent parries, they don't usually get a punish. Finally, let's talk about 12 supers. SA1, XNDL, is generally his best super, I would say, purely because it's the only super 12 can combo into on the ground, thus it's his only real hope at getting high damage and a knockdown. For example, you can follow almost any parry with SA1, which you can't really do with SA2 or SA3. Also, you can confirm into it from max cancels, while his other supers are much more difficult to confirm. It stocks two bars, while his other supers only stock one. Because 12's EX moves are alright, it's good to use a super which doesn't lock you out of them. SA1 has a good amount of neutral use, too. It's got invincibility and then low profile for most of the animation, so it's actually an alarmingly good anti-air. As well as a fireball punish. And a reversal. Be aware that it does lose damage if you land it from far away. Super 2 is XFLAT. It's an air-only dive super. It does quite a bit more damage than SA1. Unfortunately, the only combo is from stand medium kick on a standing opponent, and it's difficult to do that confirm consistently, so while you can do it after grounded parries, it's executionally demanding. It's pretty good as an air to air where it's fast and unblockable, but it is parryable. What's worse, it's only a single parry. Also, if it hits us in air to air, it does much less damage than if it hits a grounded opponent for some reason. Obviously, you can't use it as a reversal. Also, the single bar makes it restrictive to use EX moves. I used to see the super versus Hugo, but nowadays I never see it. 12's final super is his most notorious one, XCOPY. 12 turns into the opponent for a while. Except all of his attacks are about 1.5 times stronger. Notably, this is the only way to play as Gil in the arcade version of the game. The downside is that your super meter is now a timer, so you have no EX moves. 
And more importantly, once the timer runs out, on 12's first available frame, he'll transform back to his normal self. If the opponent hits 12 during this recovery, they do double damage. And also, he can't block, so you can do whatever you want to him. Which rather famously leads to this little sequence. Now 12 is airborne, which does affect the opponent's punishes somewhat. The opponent doesn't even have to turtle. Even moderate defensive play can easily stall out the timer, and the opponent's punish when the transformation ends can be massive. The transformation back absolutely destroys X copy as a viable super. Honestly, 12 is so mediocre that playing as the opponent for a while might legitimately be an upgrade, especially considering your increased damage, but it's still much worse than picking that character at the select screen, so all X copy is really good for is showing off. One thing I will mention is that you can taunt while transformed, and the taunts persist after 12 transforms back. X copy does work when fighting other 12s. And I guess you'd pick it in that matchup just for the memes. You get the power boost for a little while, and then the punishable recovery. Okay, I've kind of been dancing around it the whole video, but let's get to the meat of why 12 sucks. It's almost entirely his damage. Let's take a look at your standard meterless shippu punish. Okay, now watch this shippu punish for comparison. You see what I'm saying? 12's punish damage is so low, it's literally stronger to just throw the opponent. Medium Axe does the same damage, but it needs reversal timing, it's minus on hit, and it has no Oki. You can get a higher damage punish with Heavy Axe, but it's restrictively slow. You need the Red Parry. Let's look at Sean for comparison. Sean has garbage special moves, but at least he gets decent damage and a knockdown here. 12's punish damage is the lowest in the game, and in fact, he genuinely does about half the damage of the next lowest character. And here's Sean's red parry punish. And you might say, well, Sean just has high damage, but I promise you he doesn't. And you might not think this pervades into every single little part of 12's design, but it really does. Just as an example, parries are an extremely central part of SF3's core mechanics, and generally speaking, most parries lead to a punish combo. Let's take a look at a Ken mix-up. Kem wants to do meaty target combo on my wake up. Here's what happens when it works. Here's what happens when 12 gets the read on the parry correct. Close strong, back medium kick, or medium axe are all too slow to punish after the parry. A more realistic 12 parry follow-up would be this. Compare 12. 12 is going to go for a meaty of his own. Observe the damage when Ken makes the wrong read. Now observe the damage when Ken makes the right read. Parries are supposed to be a unifying balance force of SF3. It's an incredibly strong mechanic that works exactly the same way for all characters. But here, they're actually doing the opposite. 12's damage is so low that he has a hard time dissuading opponents from just going for aggressive parries against him, since they're not risking much of their wrong. By contrast, 12 has the lowest damage after a parry of anyone in the game, so even though he's using a universal mechanic, he can't exploit it to the same degree other characters can. One successful Hugo parry might do as much damage as four successful 12 parries. Now I think it's pretty obvious that low damage in Punishes has huge and ugly implications for 12, but he also has really low damage in Neutral. Let's take a look at some of his standard neutral buttons. When you're playing a ground game, what are you going to be landing? Mostly pokes and counter pokes, i.e. lots of stand jab, low short, and maybe far strong and low forward. Here's the problem, none of those do very much damage. 
If the opponent attempts a guest parry on a low forward, look how much damage they can do to 12. If they miss the guest parry, look how much damage they take. Let's compare 12's guest parry. If you got super, you can't really do anything but raw super. And if you don't have super, you can't really do anything. This also applies to his jump and pressure. He's mostly dangerous mid-air, doing instant air dash stuff, but look what kind of combos you get on hit. Jump heavies do more. But even then, they only do about as much damage as jump heavies from the rest of the cast. And again, 12 really struggles to combo out of them on the ground. Oftentimes, the best thing to do after a successful air normal is to just use the hit stun to jump again. Now, low damage is mitigated by having a super stocked. As I've shown, 12's combo damage is below average, but workable when he can end his combos in a super. This creates a reliance on meter. 12's combo damage is alright when he's got a super. And the annoying thing about 12's hit and run gameplay is that because he has no attack sequences, his meter build is pretty slow. Look at the meter build of this block string. Honestly, your time is best spent mashing low strong if you're not close to your opponent. Another weakness of 12 is a lack of Okizeme. I mean, what knockdowns does he have? SA1 and SA2. His three throws, which you can't combo into. His mediocre sweep, which you can't combo into. An EX Dive and EX Needle, which you can't combo into. And that's literally it. Just about every other character in the game is rewarded with knockdowns. Even if you're a low damage character, your follow-up Oki mix-ups can be extremely potent. Also, before I forget, 12 has the 5th lowest health in the game, and also he's the only character with no grounded overhead, probably because of the low air dash stuff. In the Ryu Ultra 2 video, I did a comparison with Evil Ryu's Ultra 2, which had much better design. I want to do another comparison now, this time using Chun-Li. Like 12, Chun-Li has a pretty hard time putting a combo together. Her only real combo ender is Spinning Bird Kick, which isn't even available after a parry. It's common for Chun-Li players to just punish with Sweeper Throw before they have bar. So like 12, Chun-Li primarily uses her pokes and strong neutral buttons to keep the opponent away while she builds meter. The difference is that once she has meter, Chun-Li has an incredible hit confirm in low forward, which forces the opponent into extremely defensive play when she's close, or else they hit a 40% damage combo. And once they're forced to block and turtle, Chun-Li easily pokes her way to another super meter. This also works in perfect harmony with her fantastic Kara throw. What I'm saying is that 12 and Chun-Li actually have a decently similar game plan. Both Chun-Li and 12 were added in third strike, and personally, I think it's pretty understandable that the devs didn't expect one to be top tier and the other to be bottom tier when they've got kind of similar strengths and weaknesses. I have no footage for the rest of what I want to talk about, so I'm just going to throw up some high level 12 play while I talk. I'd like to address what I think are some common community misconceptions. Namely, that 12 has terrible neutral. I've heard this from a lot of different people, and I actually disagree completely. If you watch pro 12 players, you'll actually see 12 finding hits left and right, and generally keeping control of the match for extremely long periods of time. The problem is only that the opponent can equalize 12's 3 hits with one of their own. Apart from everything I just showed in this video, 12 is actually decent or even above average. In fact, I'd go as far as to say if his damage in general was just doubled with no other changes, he'd be a solid mid-tier. I think I actually have a lot of insight on why 12 is designed the way he is. Characters who dominate neutral tend to be top tier in fighting games, and the ability to create openings or control movement is classically much more important than things like health or damage. You can see that in older fighting games with characters like Dalsim, and you can see that even in Third Strike with characters like Yun or Chun-Li, who are frail low damage characters that completely set the pace of the match. I think 12 was an experiment in just how shitty you'd need to make a neutral dominant character in order for that character to be fair. 
Now, I think 12 was a failure on that front, but he's an important failure. If you look at characters like SF5 Dalsim or Fong, they're dominant and neutral with low damage and mediocre combo routes, yet they're pretty well balanced with the rest of the cast. Anyway, that's my video. Hope you found it enlightening. Next video is probably going to be a shorter one, but we'll see. Oh yeah, I'm going to leave a playlist of 12 footage in the description, and I strongly recommend you check it out now that you've got some context. It's quite interesting the way people play around these limitations.